So whenever you talk about Astralis, the first name that has to come to mind has to be Device. Astralis always does well, but they have this curse of getting to the semifinals and then never being able to move forward. They had this classic storyline. They would choke. They would get nervous. It's the old narrative where they're, you know, they're the chokers or the guys who can never make it here because they always collapse. I know that they always choke and they always fail. When people would say, oh, we can expect them to choke now. The introduction of a sports psychologist for Astralis, also very important with their history of choking. Up until the earlier part of this year, one of the main things, a characteristic we would have described Device as, is a choker. He'd be the one who'd choke. Oh, what? Device, what are you doing? Device, he should know. He sees Al as well. He's, he spots both of them. He gets, oh my god, Device! That is insane! What a next level play! And it looks like Device, just like in the pistols, is going to stop the plan. He picks up the kills to go with it! Device! But the vice is in the back, and you can do so much damage from here. You can see he can hide from the follow up players. He gets another one. And Astralis has a two on five, and they finish it off. Nikolai Device Rietz was born in Vila, Denmark on September 8, 1995. From a young age, he demonstrated a natural talent for not only playing games, but mastering them. Honestly, I think my first memory of Counter-Strike was when like, you had like that after-school club when I was like eight or nine years old where like, people were playing some shooting game and I was watching a little bit. I wasn't that interested in video games right at that point when I was that age, but I tried it out and people were kind of shocked and started calling me a cheater and I was a little kid and 30 year old would call, like people would come and check my computer for cheats when I was at a LAN tournament and so on. In addition to being an avid Counter-Strike player, he also became truly gifted at badminton. He was playing at the, the top level team in our city. One of the big clubs in Denmark was asking if he would play with them. But he said no. I think I was, I was always very competitive like as a person. I played badminton on a pretty high level and I also played CS at the same time. So I kind of chose to pursue um, badminton a little bit more in the beginning um, when I was like in my early teenage years. But at one point I just realized that I was really good at Counter-Strike and I had to, to like challenge myself in another way. By 2011, the 15-year-old Dane was considered a top-tier talent in Danish Counter-Strike Source and was given a chance to play for one of the region's best teams, the Copenhagen Wolves. Uh, do you think this guy's got a great future or what? Uh, for like one and a half year ago, I definitely thought he was cheating, but uh, after been boot camping and playing with him at this land, I'm sure that he is the next to be, to be careful for. But his time and energy were split between his two passions, the traditional sport that he was expected to pursue, and the e-sport in which he'd become not only tremendously talented, but spiritually invested. Device knew that something had to give, and after two years of indecision, being kicked from the wolves over his inability to commit, and a sports injury, he knew that the time had come to shift his focus to Counter-Strike. It was always like a 50-50 for me, and in the end it was an injury in the knee that made me decide, I'm really good at this Counter-Strike game, I should continue with that. Come 2013, Device had rejoined the Wolves, and it was here he would meet two of the most important and long-standing teammates of his career, Peter Dupree Rasmussen and Andreas Zipix Huesleth. And within a matter of weeks, Device was showcasing his talent against some of Europe's best. 
Yeah, they're not going to be, I mean, they could still obviously increase the lead to 11-4, but they're not going to have a, a, a wow. ginormous lead from it. Device wow. is just picking up kill after kill here on the outside. There's his fourth. Device is now 15-5. and five. But the question was whether the prodigious Dane was ready to commit to Counter-Strike full-time. Device went on to spend roughly nine months with the Wolves and was removed and re-added to the roster twice on account of his inability to show up to practice. It was during the month of CSGO's very first major at DreamHack Winter 2013 that Device decided to get serious. He joined the Wolves for the fourth and final time as they prepared for their last hurrah at the biggest tournament CSGO had ever seen. They took out one of the big danger men. If they can follow it up, well, they lose to three. They lose two more. Finish what the a device. turnaround there. Down. Very Games have three, and Copenhagen Wolves have just two players left standing. Took a bit of damage, but he's still standing, and he'll push through. Zipnix is out. It's all on Nico, as he looks to hold Copenhagen Wolves in this tournament. He dances back. He's got just Smiths on 27 points of health. He's going to move in now. Can't see him. Can't see him. Looks for the Frenchman. Has a guess. He's going to try and bait him out with the defuse and pushes around the corner. Oh, Smiths gets it. The romance is over. The French have gone through. The Danes emerged from the tournament with a 5th 8th finish and were convinced that they'd finally found the right chemistry they needed to win. And though they were unable to renegotiate their contracts with the Wolves, the roster opted to play under their own banner, Uber Geeks. Uber Geeks quickly established themselves as one of Denmark's strongest rosters and were picked up by Team Dignitas several months before CSGO's second major in Katowice. We are extremely thrilled about joining Team Dignitas and we have high hopes and expectations for this project and 2014 in general. We look forward to representing Dignitas in the future, and we hope that our cooperation will bring forth lots of good experiences and memories. And we're really happy that we can finally announce that we are arriving. After finishing first in their group, the Danes managed to topple Hellraisers in the quarterfinals, before meeting a dominant Ninjas in Pajamas in the semis. Three on three here, this Get Right is waiting for him. First picks up one, and he actually picks up a second, but Get Right finally turns around, picks up the guy into main, and now it's a one-on-one -on -one device with two HP. Get Right with full. Not looking for the kill, just like this, knocked down to 46 HP. Flash gonna come in, and actually he's gonna get the oh kill! What an outplay by Device, he's gonna get the defuse off of this. See if he gets it. No. Nope. Oh. oh. Nice push in the hut here, Exists. is right in front of him, he's gonna spot him out. Has to get the kill onto him, looking for the second, he will pick that up as well. Not before getting dinked up, but Fiber gets taken down. Get right comes in though, gets the kill on his Zipnix. Yes. Matters down to 2 HP, now Fiber gonna come in, gonna pick up one. Get right, gonna pick up another one as well, and they are just shredding through them, that nade. Completely tore them a new one. On the hands of the pre and fetish. All oh, both by Ramp Forest. It's taken down though. And that is that potential push coming in. See the Baron Peek around the corner. Looking for that kill. Gets to pre down at really low health. But they clean it up. That is NIP picking NIP up the 2 0 victory. Little did the Danes know their loss to NIP would be the first in a long line of quarter and semi final eliminations. But 2014 was still a breakout year for Device, as he managed to make an appearance on HLTV's list of the top 20 players of 2014 but his best was yet to come. In the days following their 5th 8th finish at DreamHack Winter 2014, Dignitas decided that the time had come for a change. Out went Fetish and in came another Danish IGL, one who is expected to take the now closely knit core of Device, Dupree and Zipix to the next level. I think actually on this team, he's the new guy, but crucially as the in-game leader. We've already known that Dignitas have the skills. They've got all these fraggers, these really skilled players, but they've never had like the unit. They've never been the cohesive team, and the teams that beat them are the ones who have the tactics, and they know how to win T-side rounds. And this is the change that they really need, especially when they always, they always do good in groups. They uh, tend to uh, to choke a little bit during the, the just playoffs. Just a bit. Uh, just a little bit. Uh, and then maybe bringing in Kerrigan might actually change that. Maybe this will, maybe we will see their first uh, uh, finalist. Uh, who knows? The first event Dignitas played under Kerrigan's leadership was MLG's Aspen Invitational, where Device demonstrated that he was capable of playing on a whole other level. They're trying to see what advantages they can find. And there it is, look, they're going to spot one player, and that's going to cue the aggression to get the trade here. It goes, Device gets the shot onto Pronax, he goes down from heaven. That's an opportunity now, with 10 seconds left, Bomb goes down. One on one against Olofmeister. But the he still hasn't peaked, and all he's going to do, he's going to try and hold it, he's behind the boxes. Oh no, peek out sooner, is he going to get him? He fakes off of it. Olaf, so smart, but does he have the defuse? Oh. He does not, he couldn't hold it long enough. He does still get some shots in, Device just waiting it out, Pronax gets him, but there it is. Device pops out, the teamwork, absolutely brilliant. They take him down and it's all Crims. He'll walk in, Device on him as well. 
Man, oh man, Device is playing absolutely excellent today. They would assume it would cover them off, and they haven't dropped the second one at the top of Electrical. Oh, no, and Kerrigan's going to mow them down. They're in full position. It's match point. Can the favorites, the tournament favorites, go home empty-handed? Nobody would have predicted it. Dignitas showing off. Some incredible new form under the leadership of Kerrigan will win the first award at X Games medal, the bronze. After a third place finish, Dignitas emerged from Aspen as one of the most promising teams in the world, and Device one of the most promising players. It came as no surprise then when, several days after the event, it was announced that the Danes had opted to leave Dignitas in favor of Team Solo Mid, whose offer was alleged to be one of the most economically enticing across the entirety of CSGO. They were talking to like three or four other organizations, and they wanted to go with the best and highest offer possible. So they put okay. all the organization, all the organizations against each other to just have a huge bidding war. Whoever offered them the most appealing package were able to get them. So when we went in, we actually increased compensation above all board because we were super aggressive uh, with getting into the scene. So we pushed pricing percentages uh, to an all-time high. Like we took like almost no percentage. It was like really little. And on top of that too, the salaries that our players were getting, it was also one of the highest salaries, and most aggressive salaries of that time. Within two months, TSM were facing off against the best teams in the world at 2015's Katowice Major. And it was here where Device proved that he wasn't just capable of beating the best, but downright styling on them. Device, he should know. He sees Alu as well. He wants to see if there's another one he could kill. He spots both of them. He gets, whoa, oh my god, Device! That is insane! Takes down wow. Alu and Freiburg! What a next level play! He had them lined up for wow. execution. Yet, despite their best efforts, they only managed to get as far as the quarterfinals. And from that point on, Device started developing a reputation for falling short at majors. But regardless of whether TSM won or lost, Device always managed to put on a truly staggering performance. Here, make that one. Device, the last man, holding in the corner. First kill goes his way. They line up for him! Triple kill! And Taz is now very low as well. Situation is turned in the blink of an eye. Eight seconds left. And Device, could he have just pulled an Alu? He needs to get the quad, and he's gonna get it! He is gonna get it! Three seconds! Impossible! The ace for Device! Talk about the comeback! And as their star player's dominance began to surge, so did TSM's results. The team went on to amass six first place finishes between Katowice and the following major in Cologne, including four consecutive tournament wins. And yet, come Cologne. 39 seconds, and they're gonna. Once again, rotate back, but this time with a bit of a twist as Kerrigan is moving up into CT spawn. He's gonna die to Happy. That should have definitely been a kill. MBK up here, he drops Cajun. Oh no, not like this. It's a 2v5. Envy, they're punishing TSM. Debris goes down. And it all comes down to Sipnix here. 1v4. He's got 15 seconds and Kerrigan eyes it. To Envy, they make their grand finals here in Cologne. In spite of floundering at the Major, TSM picked up right where they left off and were quickly establishing themselves as one of the best teams in the world. And Device was a big reason why. In the two months following Cologne, he went from being TSM's most statistically impressive player to the single most consistently dominant competitor across the entirety of Counter-Strike. What's interesting is he manages to come dominate with consistency. It's not just with crazy games, it's that he's always there in the game and he's always putting up these frags and giving you a chance to win. It doesn't matter who he's playing, this guy dominates against all competition and always gives a minimum of a very good performance. That's why he's the best in the world. This is where Device is, for me, he's set himself apart from all these other players. And as a result, he's a key reason why TSM is poised legitimately to be the winner of the next major. And going into the third and final major of the year, it finally felt as if Device was slated to earn his long-awaited title. After finishing first overall in the group stage, TSM should have had no trouble disposing of NIP in the first round of the playoff bracket. But then... They come through the window, Forrest is going to be there, he sees the gun barrel, get right, getting another headshot here. It's now a double kill, he's looking for just a bit more, he's reloading, he ends up going down, sip with the double, and now it's a two versus three. And Dupree and the Sibniks, they've got more pressure than they've ever had on them here. Freiburg spray through the smoke, it's gonna take down one. Dupree goes down and TSM, they drop out NIP, they're gonna be in the semifinals once again. In the months following their disappointing finish at Cluj Napoca, the discussion surrounding TSM's inability to close out a tournament became the talk of the town for all the wrong reasons. 
Is there was there some truth to the the claims like when Thorin would say, "Oh, you know, TSM choke in the semis," or when people would say, "Oh, we can expect them to choke now." Is that just you know, is it happenstance when you lose in those situations? Is it nerves? People like to claim things um, on behalf of the team, and when people say we choke, I would agree it, it was 2014, but not in this year. Mm. Um, I think it's just silly to say that because it's hard to just state it as a joke every time and people keep doing it and it is like you don't really feel the nerves anymore you just lost the game because you played poorly and they played better and it didn't help that come the end of 2015 an antagonism that had been going on for several months between the team solo mid organization and the danish roster they'd enlisted came to a head the danish squad came to me they're like hey andy i want to really focus on performance and not do these sponsor things i was like fine don't do it for this time but make it up later but the thing is that it never ended up being made up. So we had all these things that they had to do, but they didn't end up doing it. But because the players had such aggressive percentages on winning and performing, they focused on that. And so things got to be really bad with our team because um, they didn't fulfill their services, which I felt like behind the scenes, that's a really fair reason for me to, um, you know, look to part ways with our CSGO team. Dissatisfied with both TSM and the other orgs they were in discussions with, Device and his teammates felt as if there was no place they could go that would satisfy their main criteria, putting the players' interests above all else. And after years of playing together, they developed a clear idea as how a team ought to be run. So, after parting ways with TSM, the players spent several weeks as the unsigned question mark before unveiling themselves as the self-made, self-owned super team they'd long dreamed of becoming. Astralis. I can say that Astralis was on the way uh, like way back, even in maybe start October um, when we started getting closer and closer. We, we wanted to see if our own organization could match what we could get from other organizations and it basically could. It, it, makes, more, it, it makes more meaning for us to play under Astralis now than it would be to play under another brand. But despite their explosive launch, Astralis kicked off 2016 somewhat haphazardly. After only securing top four finishes ahead of the year's first major, the Danes entered the event only to be confronted with a sad, frustrating reality. They hadn't shaken their tendency to choke when it mattered most. Spots the jump again! What a shot! Reaction device goes down! Guardian is so slick and Cajun B nades toward him, but he's got into the underpass. Problem is, he's let two go by him, Zeus and Edward. They're timing up middle, he's gonna be spotted down by Dupree, but they've got so much control, so much information, and they're just tearing them apart. It's down to just Cajun B and Dupree. That's Cajun as well, gonna fall. And I dare say it, it's over. Navi are in the grand final, the second straight time. And the look on Device's face, he's had a shocker of a game to finish things off here at the Major. Astralis were only able to secure third fourth in Columbus, a disappointing result considering how long they'd straddled the threshold of greatness. The community had even started to refer to Astralis' inability to reach a major final as the semi-final curse. It felt like just seeing everything crumbling in the same way that it has done before kind of well, was kind of a setback in a way that I didn't expect and it made me like emotional because I was like you get all of these depressing thoughts that all of the work I have done has not paid off. Looking back at it, obviously you can take a lot of positive things from even the loss. Um, and yeah, it's, that was pretty, pretty much why I was sad, like feeling the, the disappointment in yourself and like in the whole team as well. But little did the Danes know, things were going to get worse before they got better. Within a month, Astralis had swapped longtime rifler Cajun B for Kiarbi, a talented young star whose nickname in the Danish scene was Little Device. But because Kiarbi qualified for the upcoming Cologne Major with a different team, he was unable to compete with Astralis. In need of a stand-in, Astralis turned to someone whom Device, Dupree, and Zipix had always admired but were never afforded the opportunity to play with, reputed Danish IGL Glaive. And yet, in a tragic turn of events, Dupree was struck with a debilitating case of appendicitis midway through the Major, forcing their coach Zonic to play on his behalf. It felt as if Device and his comrades were encountering a string of bad luck, and it reflected in their play. Four on five now, it's still Virtus Pro, they haven't committed, but now they're gonna come towards this outer bombsite. Here come the smokes, it's all on this defense. Zonic, Glaive, Carrigan will be the first in line, but 
Can they stop what's about to come their way? Neo takes a step out, Carrigan greets Neo with a smile, but it's Taz, and it's Taz all day! That's two! There's Snacks coming in with one, and it's left Simnix in a horrible situation. Viali's already on the hunt. See them looking for it, and the spray comes in. Zipnix knows his days are numbered, but he's still fighting the good fight. But it's at the end. After a tough match against the Stralis, who fought with sheer heart, grit, determination, anything you can think of, they put it up there. But it wasn't enough. It would be five months before Stralis got another shot at a major title, and Device's Danish ensemble had been tasked with climbing out of one of their worst slumps. Despite having a myriad of experience, Astralis were simply incapable of coming together as a team. Ultimately, their problem wasn't skill-related, it was an issue of mentality. After three months of disappointing finishes, the Danes made the drastic decision to sell their in-game leader Kerrigan to FaZe Clan. Astralis enlisted Glaive as their full-time replacement, but more importantly, they collectively decided that it was time to confront their so-called semi-final curse, and made the pioneering decision to hire a sports psychologist. My name is Mia Stelberg, and I am a sports psychologist from Finland. First, we started off working with the team spirit. Then, of course, I do individual work with them, because all of them have their strengths and weaknesses as players. In general, I'm trying to teach them to be mentally more stronger and also how to handle pressure. And then, just like that, Astralis' performance skyrocketed. The team went on to earn top four finishes in the next four tournaments they played in, including the ECS Season 2 Finals, where Astralis finally overcame their demons. Going around the back of the site, Rush can't do anything about it. Three players left to stop Astralis from winning ECS Season 2. Mix was on fire, he's in trouble, he enters no and boys getting traded. Still alive, now he's the last man standing, but he can't do it. Astralis are your ECS Season 2 champion 2016. They've done it, James. They've finally done it. Astralis have put themselves back up there with a massive tournament victory, and they did it in the most incredible fashion. With Glaive at the helm and both Device and Kyarbi firing on all cylinders, Astralis sailed into 2017 with a cargo load of confidence. And come the end of January, all eyes were on Astralis as they entered E-League's Atlanta Major as favorites. After a middling group stage, Device found himself facing off against a simple-led Na'Vi in the first round of the playoff bracket. And with the match being hailed as the tournament's true finals, the Danes knew that losing was not an option. Device though, got a lovely angle, but can he find the heads? He can! There is another one, there goes Simple! 15 seconds again, the bomb needs to go down, they're just running into the crosshair, and he's delivering every single time! Four kills for the Vice, he wants the fifth, he wants the ace, not gonna get it, those C's! He's got two more players to take down, the Glaive towards Bank, Zipex towards the truck, he's gonna, oh, he's got that wrong angle, and that's it! Game one's gonna go the way of Astralis, and what a message they have sent to Na'Vi! This is not gonna be good for Redwood, he's not looking the right way, and hit from two sides, it wants the sandwich! Oh no, it's looking very grim for Simple and Flamey. Can they do it? Simple gets the first one. Flamey though, he's under pressure and Simple's head comes clean off. Flamey to deliver, but three points of health and Astralis have done it! By the time they advanced to the semis, they'd amassed enough confidence to need only two games to put an end, both to their opponents and to the so-called semi-final curse. This time he's perfect, they're in a main. Disco's got his back turned, he's ready for it, but he's got a hit shot, has it! Lineup's there for Dupree, he's got two! What a play! Glaive's got all off! He's got the high HP, but he has it off! He's missed shots! That could have cost him, it does! What a shot from Crims! Fnatic in the most magical way of pulling it back, but look at Kirby! Right time, right place! And Astralis get 19 in overtime to take map one. Astralis overcoming all odds. And the curse that has always been their problem. It's Crims down, it's one to go. It's only Dennis remaining. Desperate with a bomb and 15 HP. Caught out, blinded up, and Kirby's got him. And that is a huge, huge relief. But they're not done. These guys mean business. They knew coming into this tournament they had one goal. They're the favorites for a reason. For the first time ever, Device had made it to the finals of a CSGO major. And after spending nearly four years as a top-tier player, he had no intention of disappointing his team, his fans, or himself. The only thing standing in his way was a notoriously explosive Virtus Pro. 
Toppling them would be no small task, a fact which became painfully obvious in the third and final map of the series. Here comes the Virtus Pro push, Snacks gets the refrag on Dupree. That's a big start. Now Devices in the back line with the AWP, but he's going to get smoked off. He can't get the shot. 13 seconds, they're pounding the bomb right around, but is there anyone there to stop it? It doesn't seem like it. And now the retake is on. Device missing shot after shot. This is painful to watch, especially because Taz was so close. He could hear the scoping, and that sets it up perfectly. VP not going to make any mistakes. They aren't peeking him until they got him looking the wrong way. Zipnix. Not going to make it happen in the end, and another crucial round picked up here for Virtus Pro. A 6-0 lead now for them. And yet, despite finding themselves in a 7-round deficit, Astralis began to rally. Device is creeping in, gets the flick on Neon, takes him down, and suddenly they're in a 2-on-3. Taz still up there, and they're looking for him to try and see if they can close him out. As he peeks, he's going to get taken up by Kievu, and now it's just Bihali in the corner. They're going to get the full retake. Nobody even goes down. Out now at this point, and he's going to be able to spot Zipnix for free, but that gives it away. Those tracers, you can see Dupree trying to close in, but Taz will hit the headshot into the 1v1 we go in so little time. Kievu sticking the defuse, and he's going to hit the shot. Unreal! Up by Ebox. Oh, the Molotov coming in. Dupree nearly getting the spray. Bihali going to go down anyway, and there's Neo dropping next. Pasha and Taz are left, it's a two on four. Astralis, they're bringing it back. This is incredible, are we gonna see it? Are Astralis gonna break the curse? Are they going to win their first major, the first time they're in the finals? And their first title, we'll find out, because the action's on, and Gabby opens it up, takes down Bialy already! Snacks in an uncomfortable position, he goes down with the Max 70, can't make it happen. Finally, Pasha coming in with a refrag, but he's down, the bomb has been picked up by Dupree, they get the spray, Neil takes one, and Taz is there, and Astralis, they win the first major championship, 16-14 against Virtus Pro! Unbelievable! Device and his Danish brothers had finally reached the peak of competitive Counter-Strike, but little did they know, they wouldn't be able to stay there for very long. Astralis continued to put up excellent results in the months following the major win, including a victory over FaZe Clan at IEM Katowice. It was in the wake of that tournament that Device began to shed light on some recent stomach problems he'd been having. Having been diagnosed with a hiatal hernia, a condition whose seriousness is amplified by stress, Device was instructed to attend fewer events, and was even hospitalized in November after pushing himself too hard. Coupled with Kyarbi's lackluster play, results steadily declined, and the situation was clear. Astralis had been relegated back to a life of semi-final exclusions. After months of teetering on the edge of irrelevance, the Danes exited 2018's Boston Major without even making the playoffs. And, in a shocking turn of events, Kiarbi announced that he had left Astralis for North. When I got the news, 100%, I was still on vacation. I was obviously shocked. I didn't know what to say right. We, I thought that, I feel, still feel like we're good friends, but in all honesty, I, we would just have appreciated a conversation about it because also still at the moment, we really don't know why he left. So yeah, it's a bit sad, but um, I hope that he does well. And when I see him at events, we say hi and I still feel like we can get a good relationship out of it, but it's just, yeah, it's just sad to feel betrayed in, it, in some way. With few choices for a replacement, the Danes brought in Magisk to mark the beginning of a new era. The, one of the goals we had when we started Astralis 2.0, or whatever you want to call it, when we brought in Magisk, is that we wanted to, we wanted to, we wanted to have an era. Like we wanted, to, we wanted people to like analysts and, and other players and like recognize recognize us for our style and creating the the game, like creating the meta and stuff like that. When we got Magisk on the team, our goal wasn't just to be the best team in the world. We wanted to create something more than that, and and that's why we've been performing so well for so long time. It's a kind of a hard thing for teams to do to become number one. It's not the hardest part, but it's staying at the top spot. And as luck would have it, Magisk turned out to be the perfect fit. And it was around this time that the Danes began to make strides in terms of what they could do outside of the game in order to improve their in-game performance. Finding out the demands of Counter-Strike was pretty difficult, uh, because it's not like every other sport. After a talk, then I have understood the process of aiming. In my world, it's a matter of, of understand how is your coordination in your shoulder arm. How is your coordination, your eye, your stability and the position in the neck? And uh, then we can see where the deficits are. Fitness was something that Device had always been passionate about, but it wasn't until his health problems that it became his mission to exemplify the importance of maintaining mental and bodily health in esports. 
since I come from sports, physical fitness was always a normal thing for me to do. Uh, it affects my performance in many ways. I think the cardiovascular part of it helps a lot with the oxygen levels in your brain, how long you can concentrate and be focused and it, it matters a lot in practice especially because we have a lot of like long practice days and, and then if you're not in shape so to say you can be really slow and for me and for the team it's a, it's a key point for our performance. The Danes would go on to secure top four finishes at the IEM World Championship before taking first place at DreamHack Marseille in April. These guys are looking spectacular right now. It's taken a while to get things together. It's been so long since their major victory, but I think they're on path to another one now. This is the best looking Astralis since that time, and one that could conquer 2018 once again. Ladies and gentlemen, your champions are DreamHack Masters Marseille. It's Astralis! The Danes went on to earn six top four finishes in their next seven events, three of which they won. And by the time the London Major rolled around, it wasn't even a contest. Astralis were odds-on favorites to win it all. And on the back of some truly impressive performances by Device... Yeah, and Nico gonna be taking down Magus. Nice shot from Device. This is madness. Device hitting one more shot for the triple from close range. Just no scoping him. Try Pika with the dink on a Device. It might force him back, but right through the confidence. Now JR, the only one that could maybe save him. Definitely gonna be in trouble. He goes down to Device. I was gonna say, there's no way he doesn't live in this situation, but gets away only to fall to Device in the end. One player and survive, and there goes Zipnix. But Device, without taking him out, it's gonna be no problem. Black boost it up. Big kill from Device. Even Chopper is gonna go down. He has broke him. And look at Device. They managed to traverse the playoff bracket without dropping a single map. Come the grand finals, they were a shoe in. Simple and flamey. That's all that's left between Astralis and the Major. Simple on the high ground with the CZ. And Surely he's going to get taken out. Oh, there's a gift. He could pick up an AK. This might not be over yet. There's no kit, though. They've got to go far. Simple the second one. They have to keep going. They've got to charge forward. He misses the jump. Flamey now with the 570s baiting. The pair on short B is red. Touching the bomb. Are they going to peak? Holding it now. And there is it. It's just down to Flamey. It's not going to happen. Astralis! They never faltered. They did not relent. They have brought Counter-Strike to levels we've never seen before. This is their era. This is the team to beat to be called the best. You'll face it, London Major Champions. It's Astralis! As soon as they'd earned their second major victory, it became clear that Counter-Strike had entered the era of Astralis. From this point on, the Danes' domination was utter and absolute. They went on to secure eight first place finishes over the course of nine competitions and became the first recipients of Intel's $1 million Grand Slam. The Grand Slam is theirs! ESL Pro League Season 8 as well! And that's why they're considered the world's best right now. To be honest, Henry, I absolutely can. The anticipation was that this was always theirs. They were the heavy favorite coming in, and they show off why. Back-to-back -back ECS, back-to-back -back Pro League, Marseille, Season 7, Chicago, and now for the first time ever at home, Season 8, Astralis are the champions of Intel Pro League, and for the first time in history, the best of all fucking time, Intel Grand Slam, it's Astralis! Over the course of a single year, Astralis went from down and out to quite possibly the greatest roster in the history of CSGO. During this time, Device fulfilled hopes, defied expectations, and overcame a debilitating illness. He retook the Counter-Strike scene by storm, earned more MVP medals than any player in history, and solidified himself as one of the greatest Counter-Strike players in the world. When you retire, many years from now, what do you want people to say when they talk about Device? In many ways, it's difficult to talk about Device as an individual, to talk about him outside of Astralis, to reconcile his superstar status with his inherently selfless, supportive, and team-oriented attitude. I think Device has a really important role, not only like performance-wise, that he's uh, like by far the star player we have in the team, and he's, uh, he's fighting to be the best player of, of this season at least. I think the way he... Um, he motivates the team when we when we play or we're feeling down. Like the way that he tried to 
keep everyone on positive mindsets, I think is really important. And there's a reason why I've been playing with this guy for like six years. So yeah, we, we tend to keep this core for as long as possible. I love my team. Uh, I don't think I could do this with any other five guys, uh, honestly. If we weren't like such a great family uh, and friends and so nice to each other, I don't think I, it would be possible for me to do this at least. Unlike most top tier talents, Device never set out to become the best player. He set out to build the best team. The irony is that in achieving the latter, in becoming the figurehead of one of the greatest lineups of all time, he's put himself into contention for the former as well. But that's not how Device wants his name to go down in history. I think one of the one of my like my main identity is, is the physiological part about this game. It's also being aware of what you're putting your your body through, um, the, the level of stress, but also doing it all with a smile on your face. This is um, it's a lifestyle that's not for the the weak-hearted. And all honesty, I just want them to remember a, a great guy that had a good uh, vision on 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 the physiological aspect and obviously a champion. Thanks for watching. If you want more great content just like this, be sure to hit the subscribe button.